these really haven't changed much in the last couple centuries even. They're pretty simple devices. Um, we still like to use wood uh, because it's easy to repair out on the trail. Uh, if I was to break one of these stanchions on a carbon fiber sled, um, you don't really have a whole lot of options out there in the middle of nowhere with limited tools. Um, whereas with one of these wooden stanchions, I can just poke in a couple holes and lash it back together and remove it and replace it with a willow branch all together. Um, so where we have had most of our technological advances with our brake system, we have a three-part braking system. The first part is your drag mat. Essentially a piece of a snowmobile tread that we've cut off and lashed on the back here. So we're going to regulate speed. Um, if our team starts getting a little, going a little too fast, they're able to wear themselves out. So we're going to put weight down on this drag mat and that's going to create resistance for the team. Uh, hold them back a little bit and if you have a good pair of pace leaders, they're going to recognize that resistance and stick at the speed you left them. Uh, then of course getting your main brake, this is a spring-loaded bar with two uh, teeth to dig into the snow. Uh, this is how you're really going to slow down your team if you need to, so you're going down a mountain and they're just really flying. Um, this is how you're going to hold them back. Then when we're stopping, this is your snow hook uh, and your parking brake. You get down on this main brake until you're going about three or four miles an hour. And then use the momentum of the team to dig that into the snow nice and deep and an extra kick for good measure. Um, that's what's going to hold your team in place when you're taking care of the dogs. Of course, you saw how uh, strong those dogs are and how much they want to go sometimes. Uh, if they really want to go, uh, even with two snow hooks in, they can rip those right out. Um, so you always want to be with your sled or in front of it so that you can catch it. If they are going to pop those hooks, um, if I was to drop my mitts and come back here to get them, and they decide they want to go, uh, that's what we call the musher's nightmare. Uh, they're stuck in the middle of nowhere. All Nothing. your gear and your mode of transportation just ran away. You've got what you had on your back. Um, that's why we also have the first three rules of mushing. Don't let go, don't let go. Seriously, don't let go. <laughs> um, do we have any questions? Have you run here I haven't yet. Um, I've trained several teams for it. Um, do you plan works. on running it? It's in the works. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. How do the dogs run so fast? Lots and lots of practice. <laughs> um, you know, they're running year-round. Once we get home from here, uh, in the fall, they'll get about a week or two off, and then we'll start running 14 miles a day, and then we'll start running 20 miles a day, and by the time we get to December, we'll be running 50 to 70 miles six days a week. Um, all right, well, let's go meet some puppies, shall we? Yeah.